Hello everyone, welcome to the sixth lecture of the course Cyber Physical System Fundamentals. In this lecture I'm continuing uh, trying to teach you embedded systems fundamentals of uh, cyber physical systems design. The lecture uh, today covers a certain uh, section of the chapter 2 of the companion book. Uh, the chapter is entitled uh, Specification and Modeling. Uh, today I will look at a, another model of uh, computation. Uh, that model of computation can be seen on the next uh, row of uh, our table. Uh, in this next row of our table uh, we see that uh, there is an entry called Petrinet. So that's the model that uh, I'm going to describe uh, for the uh, computations in the components. And actually we will be looking at uh, three different classes of Petrinets. Uh, Petrinets in general uh, will be using a kind of message passing. Uh, there is a very limited usefulness for uh, combining Petri nets with uh, shared memory based communication. So we will look at uh, Petri nets. Where do Petri nets come from? Well, Petri nets were introduced in 1962 uh, by Carl Adam Petri in his uh, PhD thesis. Uh, he proposed this modeling technique in the appendix of uh, his thesis. Uh, the focus of uh, this uh, proposal is on modeling of uh, causal dependencies, uh, so it's uh, less uh, 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 oriented towards really describing computations, uh, less focused on uh, describing data, but uh, there is much more emphasis on de describing dependency. Uh, these uh, uh, modeling approaches, they are uh, designed for uh, capturing uh, dependency information and we assume that there is no global synchronization. In uh, the PetriNet uh, modeling paradigm uh, we have uh, three kinds of elements. First of all we have uh, conditions. Uh, conditions which will uh, be uh, described graphically uh, by using circles and these conditions can be either met or not met if uh, they are met, we will put a token there onto that uh, circle. So there will be another smaller uh, colored uh, circle. As a second element, we have events. Events may uh, take place if certain conditions are met. And if they take place, other conditions might uh, start to be met. In our uh, graphical representation of Petri nets, we will visualize events by uh, using rectangles. And then the third uh, kind of element is the flow, re flow relation. The flow relation relates uh, conditions and events, so it connects uh, conditions with events. Conditions, events and the flow relation form a so-called uh, bipartite graph, which means uh, they form a graph with uh, two kinds of nodes. Now in order to get started I'd like to uh, demonstrate a little example. In this uh, small example we will try uh, to synchronize uh, trains that have to pass uh, through a segment of our railroad system where only a single track is available. So we have to make sure that there will be no accident somewhere on the track by two trains going into opposite directions at the same time. We can model this by using a patronet by placing a token there on one condition. This uh, token reflects uh, the fact that this track is available. Also, we can place a token on another um, 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 a condition which symbolizes the fact that there is a train uh, that could go uh, to the right. Also we have an event. This event uh, reflects uh, a situation in which a train is entering the track from the left to the right. Now in order to model this synchronization we can play the so-called uh, token game. In the so-called uh, token game, uh, we are moving around uh, these uh, uh, conditions or we are moving around uh, the, uh, the tokens. So in this uh, particular situation, 
uh, we uh, have a situation in which the two conditions that are required for that event to take place they are both met and as a result of that we can actually have uh, a uh, train that is entering that segment of the track and as a result of that that uh, uh, track will be no longer available uh, so the train uh, will go to the right uh, after some time the train uh, will uh, leave that uh, segment of the track and as a result of that uh, train actually leaving the segment of the track we will have one train that left the track and uh, the track uh, becomes available now um, eventually this train also uh, might turn around be uh, available at the other end of that uh, segment of uh, the tracks and therefore the two conditions that are required in order for having a train going to the left are both met and therefore we can have such a train that goes to the left obviously while the train is going to the left that track is uh, not available and then um, after some time uh, that train hopefully will have left the track and as a result of that uh, the track uh, becomes available again uh, that uh, train might uh, change its direction again and this uh, brings us back to the initial situation so this is the so-called uh, token game in the token game we have uh, to check if the conditions that are uh, required for some event to take place are uh, all met. Uh, also, uh, we have to make sure uh, that uh, uh, the conditions that are connected through outgoing edges are, are not met. And if these conditions are uh, met, that means if these conditions connected through incoming edges are uh, actually met, then we can have such an event. And if that event takes place, uh, these uh, tokens at the incoming edges uh, will uh, disappear and we will have tokens on those places that uh, on those conditions that are uh, connected through outgoing edges. So this is the so-called uh, token game that uh, we can uh, play on a lazy Sunday afternoon if nothing else uh, uh, is uh, 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 of interest we can actually play this uh, so-called uh, token game. Now with uh, the uh, token game and in general with battery nets we can model also the situation in which there is a conflict for resources. So we see that uh, this situation is one in which we have a conflict for the resource uh, track and um, um, the PetriNet explicitly models su such a conflict. Uh, both uh, ways of resolving the conflict are feasible. That means we can have either the uh, train going to the left and then of course uh, uh, the token will disappear from that uh, uh, condition there in, in the center or we could also have the train going to the right. If we consider all uh, the possible situations that could arise in such a patronet, uh, we will have to resolve uh, this uh, uh, conflict non-deterministically and have to consider all the possible uh, 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 ways of resolving this uh, conflict uh, in a non-deterministic way. Now next I'd like uh, to move uh, to a more uh, comprehensive example uh, an example in which we have a somewhat uh, more comprehensive uh, system of uh, trains. So in this case I'm uh, looking at a, a section of uh, the so-called Thales trains uh, that are running in uh, Western Central Europe. Uh, there uh, we have uh, trains that uh, connect Amsterdam, Cologne, uh, Brussels and, and Paris. For the sake of simplicity we are ignoring the other parts of uh, that system. So uh, therefore we will just be modeling the trains between uh, Brussels and Paris and between Cologne and Brussels and between Amsterdam and Brussels. 
Uh, these uh, trains are used in a very special way in that uh, there are uh, short trains that run from Amsterdam to Brussels and also from Cologne to Brussels. Uh, there uh, they get uh, joined and they run as a longer train than to Paris. Uh, at Paris uh, they change directions at, after some time and then they run back as a long train to Brussels there they get disconnected again and they run as shorter trains back to Amsterdam and uh, to Cologne. Now this is uh, a situation that we can also model uh, with a Petrinet. Uh, this is the uh, Petrinet uh, model of our trains. Of course these uh, steam engines are uh, no longer in use on that segment of the track. Actually it's a high speed uh, track but the steam engines are of course a little easier to visualize. So in this case we are starting with a situation where we have uh, a train in Amsterdam and a train at Cologne and the train at Cologne can then make its way to Brussels. The train from Amsterdam can also make its way uh, to Brussels. There at Brussels these uh, two shorter trains uh, uh, get joined and they are then available for a departure to Paris. But there is one driver whom we do not need, so therefore that driver can be sent to have a coffee break, and the other driver will take that uh, train to Paris, to the uh, station there in the north of Paris, which is called Gare du Nord. Now we assume that uh, the traffic at the Gare du Nord has to be synchronized with uh, trains to southern Paris, uh, for the sake of simplicity, we are assuming a somewhat simplified situation there. Uh, we assume that we are only synchronizing with trains that go to Gare du Nord, uh, which is a station in the uh, south of Paris. Now, we assume that uh, at Gare du Nord uh, we synchronize the uh, trains, uh, so both trains are now ready for uh, departure. And this uh, train goes then back uh, to, to Brussels where it gets uh, disconnected. Uh, so we have uh, two shorter trains now after disconnecting the uh, two halves of the long train. Uh, one short train can go back uh, to Cologne and for the other short train we need uh, that driver uh, from the coffee bar and the driver will take that uh, train to Amsterdam and we are back to the initial situation. So this is how we can play uh, the token game for uh, this uh, Thales uh, railroad uh, segment.